tutorial question you had <coughs> asked you to look at a, a mixture of hydrogen and ethane being partially separated by a membrane. So as a reminder of the different flows of gas as we go through our porous material, if you remember gas was different to liquid in the fact that gas could either flow with a pure molecular diffusion or it could flow through with this Knudsen diffusion. So what we've got here is just a, essentially a little sketch diagram. So we've got quite large pores compared to the size of our molecules. What we have basically is that our molecules only interact with each other or interact with each other much more frequently than they interact with the pore wall. So we just get our pure molecular diffusion. Okay? And that's a value that we can either calculate from a pure molecular diffusion approximation or often we can just look up uh, that value, remember, I showed you a table with a few values in to get the orders of magnitude. As we start to make our pores smaller, what we have is this, this area where we get both the molecular diffusion and the Lidson diffusion. So in this case, the gas molecules may actually interact with the other gas molecules and also with the walls. So we have a total diffusion which we can essentially take by summing up both types, the molecular diffusion and the Lipson diffusion. As we start to restrict our pore diameter even more, where it becomes around the order of the size of the molecule, what happens is, is that most of the interactions are between the molecule and the wall. Okay? So that's our Knudsen diffusion case. And you can remember that we derived this equation for Knudsen diffusion, where this is the diameter of the pore. And we were left knowing that it, it meant that the separation was basically just the difference in the molecular weights of our two gases. <coughs> so these three cases here are obviously for perfectly linear tubes, but then we use that, the approximation for a porous material where we had our effective diffusivity to be essentially the volume fraction of the pores and, the, and divided by the tortuosity of the pores to take into account that most of our material it's like this, where we have these wavy lines and these twisted paths and not these beautiful straight unhealed pores. So if we look at our question, what it asked us to do was to calculate the, the permeability for the gas through this porous membrane. So you'll remember that we define the permeability for a porous membrane essentially as our volume fraction of our pores divided by RT and the tortuosity of our pores. And then we had this combination for both the normal, the molecular diffusion and the Knudsen diffusion. <coughs> But if we actually look at the size of our pore, so it says our average pore size is 20 angstroms. So 20 angstroms is obviously a very small pore, and that's very similar to the actual size of molecules. Okay? So what we can do for this question is essentially ignore our molecular diffusion and just focus on the Knudsen diffusion case. So we can essentially ignore this molecular diffusion term and just rewrite our permeability in terms of just the Knudsen diffusion. So I also introduced the term for the, the Knudsen diffusion, which we can basically generate from kinetic theory 
basically we had that the Knudsen diffusion coefficient is our pore diameter over 3 and then the square root of 8RT over pi times the molecular weight of our molecule. <coughs> I then gave a simplified version of this but again a few of you struggled to actually work out where those numbers came from. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through that first. So if we look at our equation, we can actually rewrite this in terms of a constant and then our variables. Okay? So if we write it in terms of a constant, we get a third, the square root of 8r over pi, okay, because they're all constant numbers. And then our variables, we can have our diameter of the pore and the square root of the temperature over the molecular weight. <clears throat> so if we think back to what was written in the notes and some of the units that we previously thought about, what we want is to have our diffusivity often in centimetres squared per second. So we, would, we could write that in centimetres squared per second. We then have our gas constant term that must have a set of units. And then we know that we often have the pore diameter in centimetres, the temperature in kelvins, and then our molecular weight essentially grams per mole. So what we can do with this is rearrange the equation to work out what units that we actually need to have our gas constant in. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so all I've done is just rearrange that and then That. And basically, we need to know that our gas constant <coughs> is in centimetres squared per gram per second squared per mole per Kelvin. Okay, <coughs> which is an unusual unit for the ideal gas constant, <coughs> but we can rearrange that to essentially give us a volume. Oops, a volume over a pressure and then our moles per Kelvin. So that's a more familiar way where we have a volume times a pressure divided by the number of moles and Kelvin per temperature. <clears throat> so if we look up our ideal gas constant in that set of units or we convert to that set of units from our actual, from our known 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin, it turns out that the value we need to use in this equation is 8.314 times 10 to the 7 centimetres cubed per bar moles per Kelvin. So that BA is just the unit of pressure that is grams per centimetre per second squared. And you can just find that by looking up, as I say, or converting. <clears throat> and then if we were to put this value back into this equation, we generate... We generate that the Knudsen diffusion can be given by 4850, the diameter of the pore, the temperature over the molecular weight. And that's the equation that was given in the notes. 
to calculate the to, to calculate the diffusivity in centimeters squared per second. Okay. So we now know our expression for the Knudsen diffusivity, so we can calculate that for our gases. Okay, so I'm just going to do this for the for the case of hydrogen. So the diameter of the pore is 20 angstroms. So what we want is that in centimeters. So that's times 20. 20 times 10 to the minus 8 centimetres. And then the temperature is 100 degrees. So that's 373 Kelvin. Divided by the molecular weight of hydrogen, which is 2. And that gives us 0.0132 centimetres squared per second. So that's our Knudsen diffusivity value for our hydrogen passing through that pore of 20 angstroms. <clears throat> so the question asks us to find the permeability So basically to remember the permeability, the units of permeability depend upon whether we're looking at a liquid or a gas passing through our membrane, okay? <clears throat> or if we want the, the molar transport or the mass transport for our membrane. But it can essentially be given by the amount of gas times by our membrane thickness divided by our membrane area divided by time divided by the delta pressure of the gas. So that's the pressure difference between the two sides of the membrane. So in this case, we're looking for a permittivity in moles per centimeter, <coughs> centimeter squared, seconds, and atmospheres. Okay, and we picked atmospheres because we're told the pressure across the membrane in atmospheres, so we might as well stay in atmospheres. Yeah. What's that one, sorry. Delta pressure of gas. So the difference in the, the pressure of the gas from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane. So again, the, the part that people seem to be having the most problems with was picking the unit for the ideal gas constant this part. So what we can do is say that our permeability that we wrote before in terms of the okay, in terms of the volume fraction of our pores, our tortuosity and our nuts and diffusion coefficient. So again, if we write this in terms of units, we've just decided on the units for our permeability. Our volume fraction doesn't have any units, it's dimensionless. Our nuts and diffusion, we've just calculated in centimeters squared per second. And we have our ideal gas constant, our temperature in Kelvin, 
and of course our tortuosity again is dimensionless. So that means in this case, what we're looking for, the units for our ideal gas constant, is actually centimeters cubed per atmospheres per Kelvin per mole. Okay? <clears throat> And if we look that up, it's actually eight, about 82. So now again, just for hydrogen, we can combine <coughs> all of that together we know that our volume fraction is 30% or 0 0.3 because that's our por porosity and Knudsen diffusion coefficient we already calculated to be 0 0.0132 centimeters squared per second <coughs> Our ideal gas constant in the units that we need is about 82. Our temperature is 100 degrees C, which is 373 Kelvin. And our tortuosity is 1.5. And if we work that out, we get 8.66 times 10 to the minus 8 moles centimeter small centimeter per centimeter squared per second per atmosphere you could just ca you could just cancel it yeah. but um, you could just cancel it as per centimeter yeah. but uh, if you keep it if you keep it in in this form with the, with the centimeter per centimeter it reminds you that the, the permeability is that membrane thickness divided by the membrane area. 